Fantastic. Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you very much for having me here. As Radka anticipated, I'm going to tell you something about um, deer personality, which I understand is probably not the first species you can think of uh, when you think of farmed animals, but I will do my best to have them integrated in a wonderful group of uh, farm animals. Uh, my presentation will be composed of three main points, let's say. I will start from an overall uh, overview, actually, on animal personality. Then I will move to the experiment that's somehow the key or like the main uh, topic of this, of this presentation. Then there will be a discussion and some general conclusions. So let's start with, with personality. As you know already, personality uh, has been accepted as a not uniquely human characteristic and it has been documented already in a wide range of taxa ranging from invertebrates to fish, birds, mammals, or to vertebrates in general. If we had to uh, find somehow a definition which will fit to the concept of personality, it will probably be between individual behavioral differences consistent across time and context. It must be said that Personality has been actually ignored for most of the 20th century, but the interest in this discipline has recently bloomed as it has been uh, noticed that it's interconnected with consistent inter-individual variation in ecologically relevant situation. For example, foraging, dispersal, acquisition of rank, group joining preferences and cognition. It must be also said that there are several axes on which an individual can be allocated, let's say, personality-wise. For example, there is shyness, boldness, there is exploration, avoidance, there is aggressiveness, and there are several more. Just I chose uh, these three for a reason because they are thought to be somehow connected to the definition of a dominance hierarchy, which is going to be also some important aspect that I will uh, discuss a little bit today. Even though uh, there is no uh, unanimous consensus or like how uh, this personality, like the role the pers this uh, personality traits play in the, um, in the definition of the hierarchy. The things are a bit more complicated for the deer family because browsing the literature, one will find out that the literature on deer personality is actually pretty scarce. And like a comprehensive study is more or less present just for the fallow deer, for the roe deer and for the wapiti. However, a comprehensive or inter-context inter study was not uh, available for the, for the red deer, which as you can imagine made our deer pretty sad. So uh, what did we do? We set an experiment, of course, a methodology and an experiment to do so that our deer will stop being sent and to start investigating, to give this small contribution or to start giving this small contribution to the investigation of the personality in uh, red deer. To give you just a general overview also on the experiment, uh, what did we want to do? We wanted to investigate personality of adult red deer males and to define, if possible, some links with the dominance hierarchy. How did we want to do that? Well, there are several ways to define or to try to describe the personality. We decided to adopt the trait rating, so basically the questionnaire. But of course, there was no questionnaire for the red deer. So we had to come up with a questionnaire adapting previously used questionnaires uh, for primates, horses, uh, fallow deer and elephants. And our um, questionnaire was composed of 15 items that we consider to be representative for the, for the deer, for the red deer. And we predicted that red deer males would have constant, consistently differed in their personality traits, hypothesizing differences in personalities linked to rank, specifically having boldest or more aggressive individuals uh, occupying higher ranks in the, in the hierarchy and shyest or less aggressive individuals occupying lower ranks in the hierarchy. The facility where uh, the magic happened while well, the experiment was conducted is a facility belonging to the Institute of Animal Science of Prague, where actually the deer were kept. And for this experiment, we had 11 individuals. 
uh, by individuals, I mean that we had 11 adult red deer males because we decided to focus on uh, those out of the herd because adult males are supposed to be uh, more consistent in their behavior, let's say, and so more adapt for personality, according to the literature. Again, an overview on the experiment itself, three uh, volunteers conducted the observation, in this case for six months, of which two months were considered of acquaintance for them to get to know uh, the, the individuals and uh, to understand like the different behaviors and like to, to, be, to be able to work with them, and four months of actual observation. As I told you before, the observation was conducted across contexts. So we um, define three different contexts of observation. The feeding time, so when the animals were presented some uh, appealing food and were competing to have access to it. It looks like something like this. Basically, uh, this uh, volunteer, which may look familiar, was presenting food in several piles and the animals were competing and the observation was conducted. The second uh, context is, let's say, what we call normal time. So basically, there was no external stimulus attracting the animals. Or, so basically, they were just conducting their regular deer life. You can imagine basically like this context without me. So just the deer roaming in the paddock, uh, laying down, browsing, uh, and doing whatever they felt like doing. And the third context is actually the handling. The handling is a routine procedure. They have been handled, they had been handled since they were born. Anyway, consider that we had to uh, measure them or take some blood samples and other uh, routine uh, measures. This could be considered as a stressful, let's say, situation. We wanted to see how they dealt with it. The handling uh, looks like this. That's a crush, we call it crush. It's a like restraining facility where the deer are handled. At the end, of the six months period, the, the raters scored the deer we use in the questionnaire on the basis of their overall impression. Also, we use the observation during feeding time to define the uh, hierarchy of the herd uh, using the Clottenbrock index. Um, briefly, which kind of um, like methods we use for the statistical analysis, we first check inter-rater uh, reliability, and eventually assess the number of factors to retain in the factor uh, solution and run a PCA, a principal component analysis, uh, corroborated by uh, exploratory factor analysis and regularized exploratory factor analysis, uh, just to be on a safer side, let's say, because our uh, sample was rather small. Last, we uh, look for correlation between the Clattenbrock uh, index of each deer and the mean scores of the items that we thought would have been somehow uh, relevant for the constitution of the hierarchy. So basically confident, aggressive and submissive. As I said, this is just an overview on the statistics because there is not much time to describe it more in uh, detail, but if you have any questions, I can tell you more uh, later. Our results. So. Five out of 15 behavioral items had a high overall agreement between the raters. And these were active, aggressive, confident, submissive, and stubborn. The P principal component analysis um, gave one principal component, actually explaining almost 72% of the variance, and we labeled it confidence aggressiveness. This component had a high positive loading of aggressive confident and stubborn, and a high negative loading of submissive. As for the Clattenbrock index, it was significantly linked to the items that were connected with aggressiveness and that therefore predicted to be uh, correlated with the acquisition of the rank of the individuals. We actually found a significant positive correlation between the index and confident and a significant negative correlation between the index and submissive. Okay, beautiful. What does it mean? This leads us to the third part of the presentation, the third and last part of the presentation, uh, the discussion and conclusions. So we found what seems to be a rather small between raters agreement, which of course made us rather sad. 
So we first thought that this difference could be um, attributed to the, the difference of experience because one of our uh, raters had had already experience with deer, but even removing uh, him from the analysis, the result did not, did not change. So it was not, let's say, the rater's fault. So second thing to do, we blame it on the deer, in which way, as I said, uh, we had only 11 individuals. So probably this sample was not enough for like to cover all the nuances or all the aspects or the shades of the deer behavior. And it would have been better to do it uh, with a larger, a larger sample. And also probably the problem with, with the questionnaire, because uh, as we had to come up with a novel questionnaire, like there is uh, still the doubt or the possibility that in this preliminary study, we did not manage to cover all the aspects of life of the deer. Uh, so probably a modification of the questionnaire and the bigger samples would have made us a little bit happier. Anyway, the found component contained actually items of agonistic nature, which of course are not representative of the full deer repertoire, but it's also true that we did not really comprise the full or observe the full uh, deer repertoire because we did not take into account the uh, mate choice and the uh, feeding preferences. So for what we actually fo um, focus on, this component makes sense because male deer are well known to actually invest significant energy in an attempt to reach uh, higher rank and the component we found so that uh, confidence aggressiveness is in line with other studies both on other uh, deer species the fallow deer for example and on other uh, different groups moreover uh, in deer the dominance hierarchy is established uh, via agonistic interactions and Proactive animals, so those uh, more aggressive or more confident, are probably going to be more successful because are probably doing those who are going to initiate the, um, the interaction and to the initiative is correlated normally a positive outcome of aggression, which would explain the connection with the Clottenbrock uh, index for those for those traits. So actually, higher confidence will be connected, would be connected to a greater risk uh, taking proneness in fight, whereas a lower confidence will be connected to a smaller uh, risk taking in fight. And the first strategy somehow would seem to be more uh, rewarding. In other words, for the deer, uh, confidence could be the key to success. In conclusion, basically we provided what, uh, well, became um, the first, for sure, intercontext assessment of personality in captive adult red deer males. And the fun component, confidence, aggressiveness, well, it surely plays a key role in the personality of red deer males. However, probably this is, is not enough because if you want uh, this investigation to be more complete or to cover more aspects, we should, uh, we should have taken, so for the future, we should take more care uh, in the creation of the questionnaire and probably the use of a bigger sample size, if possible, uh, would not have hurt uh, anybody. So as it often happens, further investigation are necessary and of course, uh, welcome. These are the references used for this, for this presentation. And I thank you very much for your attention. And if you, wanted to read more or to know more about this um, study, you could find it on awesome behavioral processes because it has been uh, recently published. Thank you very much.